Hello everybody, Nikki White here, and today we are going to DIY repaint this IKEA drawer set to make it super cute. So keep watching to see how. Look at the before, so ugly, so boring, but fear not, we're gonna freshen this bad boy up. So I started off by doing a digital render and I chose the white because it was easier to work with in Photoshop. So I was just trying to come up with kind of what the idea was that I wanted to do. That's what I settled on. The first step is to do the primer. As much as I would love to skip this step, do not skip this step, it is important. You'll see later when I paint on uh, the inside a little bit without primer what that looks like. It's also important to find out what your furniture is made of. This is a wood covered in a laminate, so it's essentially a plastic. And as you can see, I was going way too heavy handed on the primer, so my boyfriend had to step in to show me how it's done because I am absolutely no expert when it comes to priming. These are the Alex drawers from Ikea. And since this was a laminate piece, I did not need to sand it. So you do need to prime it. You don't need to sand it in this case. And then my next step was picking out the colors that I wanted. And I didn't want to spend too much money on this. So basically I wanted to use what I had on hand, which happened to be some acrylic paints. Um, definitely not anything oil-based for this. So I went with some acrylic paints and spray paint for what I had on hand. Now I initially bought a cheap crappy little brush from Walmart and I regretted it later. So I ended up using these synthetic brushes that I used for my old oil paintings back in the day. Um, they are way nicer and smoother. So that is what I ended up going with. And a note, if you are brushing on the paint, you will see brush strokes. It kind of looks like the piece is made of like a wood and you can see the texture, which I don't mind too much. But do note that if you are brushing the paint on that you will have that painterly texture versus a spray paint that goes on much more flat. So mine is going to be a combination of brushed on paint as well as spray paint. So you can kind of see the difference in places there. I also opted to paint the drawers while they were still in the unit. And I know I might be going about this all backwards, but this is just kind of my DIY journey and feel free to do whatever works for you. This worked for me um, just because they were held in place and I could uh, pull them out and paint them as needed. So this worked for me. If you're spray painting, you're obviously gonna wanna take out the drawers and spray paint them outside. A baboo! Probably no surprise here, but I'm super picky about my pink shades. So here's me repainting a drawer in a lighter shade after mixing up a new batch of pink. So varnish is the last step of your project, but as I mentioned, I'm going about this all backwards. So what I did was anything that I had finished for the drawers, I varnished in the unit just to have them done so I could set them aside. I have no chills, so I just wanted to get this project done as quickly as I could. That's me mixing it into this crappy little bowl I had left over and it had some spray paint in it. And so what I learned is do not cheap out on what you are mixing your paint in. Um, since it had spray paint in it previously, it was getting some specks on my drawers. So that's why I added that kind of parchment paper in there to have a not gucked up base uh, for my drawers to do the varnish. That's an example of the spray paint. You can see how much flatter it is. Um, honestly, both work, but like I said, I just wanted to use what I had on hand. And in my case, I only had the yellow spray paint on. That's the gross janky brush from Walmart. It is like a bristle brush and you can see it is leaving lots of streaks. Okay, so Babe, AKA my wife took apart the unit um, because I did not know what I was doing. So we've got the drawers separated. Um, it'll be much easier to paint like this. And obviously I am not gonna go on the inside, but the outside and then um, for the bottom piece, I'm still gonna do the corners um, since you'll still see those. So yeah, that's gonna be a bit of a mission. That's Bob going into his litter box. So you're welcome. At this point in the game, I upped my palette uh, game since I mentioned that mixing in bowls that already had paint in them previously was getting paint speckles. So I bought this uh, disposable palette uh, pad essentially that has like a waxy paper and they are one time disposable palettes so that I could ensure I got a clean mix and my application would go on clean as well. 
We've taken apart the unit so I can paint things better. The drawers were totally cool being in the unit still, but for the rest of it, definitely I would recommend taking apart the unit. I guess it depends if you're doing different colors or not. I guess it's all one color. You could get away with priming the whole thing and then painting it. But in my case, since it was color blocked, much, much easier just to take it apart and be able to color each piece individually. And here we are again, picky with the pink. I gotta say, one of the downfalls of mixing your own color is you have to match the color exactly every time, which is a pain in the butt because sometimes it'll be a bit lighter, a bit darker. So the best tip I can give on this situation is please remember that acrylic paint dries darker than when you first apply it. So if you are trying to remix a color, make sure it doesn't match exactly what's on your board at that time. You're gonna wanna mix it a bit lighter so that when it dries darker, it will hopefully match the color that you've already gotten. And at this point, I'm painting and not really loving the pink because it is looking darker than what I had hoped. And as I'd mentioned, I'm super picky about my pink and I wanted to go a bit more yellow pink than what was in the body drawer. But again, I'm kind of like, hmm. Okay, I've painted this side piece twice already and I still don't know if I like it. It's looking a little dark. I was even mixing white with this. Um, but acrylic paint is annoying, it always dries darker. I don't know, I'm gonna have to sit on it and then see how I feel maybe next to the drawers. And here's part of the bait of my existence was mixing this purple. I initially had an amazing purple that I was going to use in spray paint form, but something is wrong with the can, so I couldn't open it, couldn't get it to spray. So I decided I had to mix my own color. And as I mentioned before, the problem with that is if you want to do a second coat or if you want to do touch-ups, you have to match the color exactly. And in my case, I mixed an amazing color, but I did not mix enough of it. So I finished a good chunk of the board and then I realized uh, I have to make more paint and then it wasn't the right color. So I went over this board probably about three times and by the end I just mixed a ton of paint so I could just coat the thing and not worry about it. So I would give the advice that as much as you may want to be stingy with your paint to not uh, have a lot of excess left over, it's better to have more than less in this case just so that you can make sure that you can cover the board and you don't have to remix a million times. At this point in the process, I decided that I was okay with the color of the pink on the other side. It didn't match the drawer, but it wasn't supposed to, and I decided, even though it was darker, I still was kind of into it. So now comes mixing the same color for the other piece, and these are the largest pieces in the unit. So mixing enough paint and getting the right shade are always a bit of a mission.
So once I had all the pieces painted, it was time to reassemble it. So I pulled up the instructions from the IKEA website and got to work on assembling it. And a big hot tip I can give is to keep all of the screws and tools all together so that when you are putting it back together, everything is already there and you're not left wondering, what do I do? What am I doing? Oh, and I was totally lazy and didn't do the back piece because that doesn't show and I wasn't too sure what color I wanted to make it. So I figure um, if I move the unit or if I ever move again and I have to disassemble it, that is when I will do the back piece for now it's up against a radiator and not going to get much views so I left it so I purposely didn't do my top coat yet because I knew I had to put it together and there might be scuffs like that. So I'm gonna fix up anything like that before I put my finish on. The drawers have already been done, but then even like this, I didn't realize that that would be showing. So I only did the trim. So I might take a paintbrush to kind of fill that in. Um, sides are pretty well done. So I just have to do the top coat there. In the top coat the top it's looking good side mm, I have to fix that up i guess before i top coat and i might just paint this blue white blue maybe i don't know um it will be a bit trickier now that it is assembled so that's kind of my fault but i was being impatient so yeah i'll see what i do with the back Here we are, so close, but so far away, going in and doing all of the minor little touch-ups, which is annoying because you have to mix the different color paints to get every little nick that is in the unit. And that also means matching the paint, which was annoying. So if you remember before I said primer was an important step, here is an example of what the paint looks like going on raw with no primer. Since you could see a little bit of the inside on the yellow part, I spray painted this and I was not going to take it back apart. So you can see it definitely does not go on as nicely without the primer and I'm sure the longevity isn't as good either. And I did a brush on varnish, which means it also has brush strokes. I'm sure there are spray on options. Again, I was just using what I had in my house at the time. And something to note is with the brush on varnish, even if you did a spray paint and it looked flat, once you brush on the varnish, it is also going to give it the brush stroke look. So keep that in mind. If you wanna to go totally flat, use spray paints and then use a spray varnish. And I found with a bunch of sections here that even though I swear I brushed on the varnish on the whole thing that sometimes spots look like they weren't varnished. So I actually went over some of these um, a few times and I had my largest of my brushes from the synthetic nice brushes that I have. This would have been handy to have a nice big brush. That's why I bought that Walmart one, but it turned out really crappy. So I would rather go in with a small brush just to make sure um, everything goes on even and there's not any streaks. 
guys. Okay, you guys, after all the fine tuning and the touch ups, here's the before. The reveal! Yes, look at it in all of its slow motion pastel glory. This unit sits behind me from where I work, and it was just so drab, that gross gray color, that I was like, I can make this so cute. So now it is all spiced up. I get to look at it every day. It makes me smile. You guys are VIPs. Here's some of my favorite drawers in there. We've got my travel drawer and my odds and end drawer. Lots of cute stuff. Oh my gosh, it makes me so happy. There it is in its natural habitat next to other stuff I use for my store. Thank you for watching. If you guys do your own furniture DIY, I would love, love, love to see, especially if it's pastel and cute. See you in the next one. Okay, see you, bye.